Last Valentine's Day, we made a video showcasing six gorgeous historical homes that were being offered for free, provided they could be picked up and moved. After doing this, we received a flood of emails from people asking how one could go about picking up a house and moving it. Well, I have never personally moved a house. So to find out the answer to this, I decided to go straight to the source. I spoke to the amazing team over at Wolf House and Building Movers, who have moved literally thousands of buildings throughout the course of their company's history, including some pretty famous ones. Wolf's very own Mike Bravant has agreed to share with you a few things you might need to know if you're considering moving a house yourself. All right, Mike. So first of all, I want to thank you so much for being here to help demystify the whole house moving process. Um, suffice it to say, you are really in a fascinating line of work. Approximately how many houses has Wolf moved over the course of your, country, of your um, company's history? Well, that's uh, that's kind of an unknown number. We don't really necessarily keep an exact track, but uh, the company has been in business since the late 60s, and it has uh, changed hands from the original owners down to the sons of one of the original owners um, some, I think, about 12 years ago. Anyhow, okay. I think it's safe to say that it's in the thousands that we've done since uh, since the company started up in the late 60s. Wow. And what are some of the most famous or noteworthy houses in your portfolio? We've done some, some pretty cool ones. Um, probably the most notable would be the Alexander Hamilton House in New York City. Uh, uh -huh. It was the, considered his country mansion back when he built it. It was in the Rolling Hills, which is now um, just north of Central Park, a few blocks. And uh -huh. you know, it's just uh, tie rises in the city now. But uh, that that was an interesting job because we had to actually lift it up 30 feet up in the air, slide it out over top of a stone porch roof from the adjoining church, and then set it back uh -huh. down in the street onto our wheel system and then move it around the corner to a park. Oh my gosh. And the pictures on your website of that are amazing. Yeah, that that's that was that was really fun. Um other couple other ones, uh we just recently moved the Harriet F. Reese house in Chicago, which was a, a okay. triple brick row house. Uh that was moved to make way for a new entertainment center going in, a uh, fairly big uh -huh. stadium of some sort. Also, on a smaller scale, we moved the Robert Venturi house, which Robert Venturi is a notable architect from Philadelphia, and this uh -huh. was, uh, I guess, fairly notable in the architectural circles. A little beach house sure. in New Jersey that we moved by barge up the Atlantic Ocean through the New York Harbor and out to the top side of Long Island. Oh, my gosh. So you, you're you willing to go to any method. You'll move it by boat. You'll move it by on the road, sort of you. Every case is sort of a you, – you really look at each house and its particular circumstances and work around that. Yes. Yeah, we have actually even uh, quoted moving a small house by helicopter to get it into oh where it needed to go. It didn't work out because there's – at the moment, there's no helicopters that can lift – the kind of weight that a house uh -huh. would need that is that a house would be to make it worth it for that house because the kind of weight a helicopter can lift makes it the house is small enough that it's hardly worth it. You can you can build another one. It would have to be historic or sentimental sure. or or something like that to make that worth it. Uh huh. Well, um, that's definitely one, something I want to talk to to you more about the the kind of cost of all of this and. And is it actually worth it in the end? Because I think that's one of the things that initially attracts a lot of people to a free house that might be offered to be moved. But in right, the end, right. is it actually something that, that makes sense? Sure. Yeah, one one other um, item that I wanted to mention on the noteworthy structures. This isn't a house, but we did move the CSS Noose, which was a Confederate steam-powered ironclad warship. 
uh, that was built in 1863, and we moved it from one museum to another in uh, North Carolina. Wow. Uh, that was another piece of history that we were able to be a part of. That's amazing. So, But you do move regular people's houses, right? You don't just deal in kind of famous landmarks, correct? Correct, yes. Yeah, it's, you know, the, the landmarks, that's something that comes along, you know, two, three, four, maybe half a dozen of them in a year that we're doing sure. working with uh, historic buildings that most people, let me say the general population, would at least know of someone who was a part of it. Uh huh. But, uh, yeah, our, our average, our bread and butter stuff is just your average house, you know, your farmhouse being moved back on the property or uh, a small ranch house being moved down the road a little bit. Yep. Well, that's perfect for us. That's, I think, what we're what we're super interested in hearing more about. Mm-hmm. Because this is something that so few people, I think, listening have ever experienced. Can you tell us a bit about the process of physically moving a house? And we're, let's let's assume that this is not something you have to put on a boat or on a helicopter, but your right. sort of run of the mill standard house that you want to move from one location to another. Sure. Um, the process. Now we we only do the lifting and the moving of the structure. So okay. there's a lot of general contracting pieces that have to be involved, and we can talk about the, those a little bit later. But the process of, of moving a house is we would generally excavate around the house uh, several feet down below the sill plate, and the sill plate is where uh, the house meets the foundation. Okay. And then we would uh, cut or break holes in the foundation walls and in, to install a system of steel beams. And that system generally on your average house is going to be two main beams running the long ways on the house, whether that's front to back or side to side, whichever is the long direction. We would have two main beams. On top of those, we would have smaller cross beams that then uh, go out and stick out past the uh, the short ends of the house. And then we shim up to the house, catch all the bearing points. The foundation, the house bears on the foundation the around mm-hmm. the perimeter and then usually a center beam. And so we ne- need to catch and take over the weight all around the perimeter and then also on the center beam. So we, sh- we shim up to all those points. Uh, once that is in place, we install our hydraulic jacks and hook those up to a unified jacking system which is a a machine that that takes the jacks no matter how much weight is on the jack. So you could have 25 ton in one corner of the house and 15 ton in another corner. And even though there's different weights on different jacks, it gives the same amount of pressure to each jack to allow it to lift evenly all the Uh way up. That's what keeps a house from cracking up when uh, when you lift it. So we we do tell people to expect some cracks, but uh, many times we've been able to lift houses that were perfect inside and not even a single crack in the drywall. Once the house is lifted up, uh, we would uh, level out the foundation underneath of it and install our dolly system, which is a, a set of wheels uh, minimum. You're going to use three and then there really is no maximum once you get up into the heavier masonry houses or the huge buildings. We just keep adding dollies as necessary. Then those dollies okay. are hooked up to a power unit, which is the diesel drive unit that powers the hydraulic system. Now, these, these dollies are hydraulically driven. These dollies are uh, hydraulically driven, and they're remote controlled. So. Okay. It's uh, the foreman will will have a remote control that he pushes the toggle switches and it allows him to steer the dollies to to drive forward or reverse uh, to hit the air brakes or to uh, there's actually hydraulic cylinders in the middle as well to actually lift the building um, as much as 16 inches as you're going through to maybe go over a, a fire hydrant or to try to get it down closer to the ground to go underneath an overhead obstacle. Sure. Have you ever had to remove overhead obstacles? I imagine you must come in contact with things like phone lines and 
other yes. obstacles in the road in order to the house? Yes, that's very common, and that is uh, actually one of the reasons why you don't usually see houses going down the road very far on the East Coast. Now, out west in uh-huh. Canada, they'll move them hundreds of miles because the overhead utilities are generally 30 to 40 feet above the road, or they're just way back away from the road or buried underground. But on the East Coast, you have wires over the road everywhere, and they're as low as 13 foot 6. Uh-huh. So, That plays into determining whether a house is going to be feasible for someone to move is how close do they have a lot to put this thing. Uh Uh-huh. So if somebody were saying, oh, I see a house in Texas, I'm interested in moving it to my lot in Georgia, that you're talking talking a major issue. Yeah, really not feasible. Okay. Yeah. And on the East Coast, in like, okay, so you brought up Texas. Texas, they'll move them <clears throat> sometimes hundreds of miles. Um, the roads are wide open down there. Uh, and, again, the wires are either high or far back off the road. So they'll go hundreds of miles there. But even then, it's rare that you'll see one go across country. But here on the East okay. Coast, uh, you're doing good to go more than a mile. Most of our moves are a few hundred feet down the road, sometimes a couple of blocks, occasionally half, three-quarter, maybe a mile. And on two or three times in the history I've been working here, we've actually moved a house 20 miles. Uh, The overhead utilities are you have phone lines, you have uh, the cable TV lines, you have electric lines, you have fiber optics, um, as well as traffic lights, uh, overhead street lights, tree branches, and overpasses, like bridges going over the road. So there's all sorts of uh-huh. obstacles. Most of them are movable, except for the overpasses going over the road generally. Uh, the DOT doesn't look kindly upon lifting the overpasses to go under them. I can imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> so the house is on the road. The house is being moved. Once it would arrive at the property, what would your process be from there? Uh, there's a couple different ways of dealing with getting the house onto the foundation. Most of the time, as long as there's room, we are going to ask that the foundation hole be excavated out and the footers poured and then a ramp down from one end uh, up to grade. And then we will drive the house down this ramp right over the footers and get it positioned exactly where it needs to be. Then we take the wheels out from under it, we put our jacks back under it, and then jack it up to whatever its permanent height is going to be. Once that's there, we leave it supported on our steel and cribbing, and then we go home, and then the mason will come in and build the the block foundation or the poured concrete foundation up off of the footers right up to the house. And so that that's that's the best so, way to do it because that uh most most houses aren't perfectly square and so you take a, a foundation, a brand new foundation that might not even be perfectly square one direction and you set out a house on it that's a little bit off square the other direction and sometimes you can be inches off and there's no way to make it fit. But if you bring the house Mm. in place before you put the foundation in, then you can drop plumb lines down from the corners and the foundation can go up perfectly right up to the spill plate and all all around. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. So, and how long does the process, let's say you're moving a house, you know, less than a mile. So is this something that can be done in a day? The move portion, yes. Um, okay. Preparing the house to move, getting it lifted up, getting the wheels under it. A uh, very small house could possibly be loaded up and ready to go in a day. Most of the time you're looking at two to three days on an average, say, 1,200 square foot house. Um, okay. And then the move itself for a mile, as long as it's a fairly clear and open move route, you can have that done in an hour. Um, If there are a lot of overhead utility lines that you have to deal with uh, or any other obstacles that you have to to deal with going, you know, say you have uh, two trees that only give you uh, six inches of clearance on either side, you're going to be slowing down pretty good. You're going to be inching through that. Um, If it's a wide open road, then you can go 15, 20 mile an hour sometimes. Yeah, we talked a little bit about 
you know, the distance you're moving in and determining cost. Are there are there specific ele- specific sort of characteristics of houses that might play into determining the feasibility, such as the size and depth of the basement, um, the age of the house? You know, a lot of the houses that I think our listeners are interested in moving are historical homes, um, homes people want to just get rid of off their property for free, um, and they're not generally homes that are in perfect condition. Can you let me know a little bit about some of the other factors that might come into play in determining the feasibility of this? Sure. Yeah, that, uh, the age of the home really makes no difference. Um Okay. It might take a little bit more work to get it supported, but our crews are are very efficient with that. They're very knowledgeable. We deal with homes that are 50 to 100 years old. That's an everyday thing. And then uh, probably a, a couple dozen times a year, we're dealing with homes that are 100 to 200 years old. And we mm. we just recently moved some uh, some historic slave cabins in Virginia. That were from the 1700s. So, okay. um, it's, it's, the older ones do take a little bit more care and loading, but, uh, there is no structure that can't be moved, per se. So your limiting mm-hmm. factor then becomes the move route to where you're going. Can you actually fit the okay. building down the road? Um, you know, if you have a 50 foot wide building and you have a 20 foot wide street with houses on either side that are only five foot off the street, then you physically cannot fit the house down the road. Mm. Uh, so the, the move route is generally the limiting factor, but the, the okay. age of the house, the, the structure type of the house. So we move a uh, frame, log, brick, block, stone, um, terracotta tile steel frame, the the type Mm -hmm. of structure really does not matter. Now, you've mentioned that you've moved urban homes to um, when you have a house that's sort of sandwiched into a lot, maybe it has um, party walls with adjacent buildings. I I assume that's a whole other level of of issues and concerns to deal with. Um, and yeah. probably not super relevant for our purposes because I think we're primarily talking about rural homes. Um, but you, when you have to deal with neighbors and all those specific factors, that's probably a whole separate issue, correct? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have on occasion uh, lifted houses that were double houses or triple houses. And then obviously in those cases, you have to have the neighbors on board. Everybody needs to want to do that. Um, mm-hmm. But then it's just, I mean, it's for us, it's just a single structure. It just so happens to have, okay. you know, it's divided into three inside. Um, and on occasion, we have lifted a single unit out of a out of a row home. And in those cases, they have huh. to separate that section from the other sections ahead of time and actually put in new bearing walls just inside the party walls for us to, to you know, to support the upper floors and the roof structure. And then we've lifted uh-huh. or and or moved it. Usually in those cases, you're working with an end unit, and so it's not as big of a deal. Um, but right. also okay. some some cases where they've had failing foundations where we have just supported one section or maybe two sections out of a out of a row of houses and held it there while they dug out the old foundations and replaced them. Mhm. Okay. Now, in terms of those ideal circumstances, right? I can imagine. Um, And in terms of the foundations, your company doesn't pour the foundation yourselves, right? You're just responsible for the move. So, if somebody was interested in doing this, they would have to take care of things on either end of the house move, such as perhaps cleaning up the the site that the house was picked up and moved from, and then pouring the foundation and, and getting um, the electrical hookups and all of that stuff on the other end. Correct. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah, they, they would need to take care of disconnecting all the utilities at the existing location, um, cleaning out the basement of the crawl space. Then we would come in, lift the building up, and move it off the site. After it's gone, they would need to take care of removing the old foundation and or you know pushing it in and, and backfilling and grading the site as necessary. 
then uh, the, we actually the clearing the move route, which includes removing the overhead obstacles and the, uh, the obstacles on the sides as necessary. It includes trimming trees and it includes traffic control, which is okay. usually a police escort or two um, detours, road closures, uh, whatever's necessary there. But those those things we actually leave for the customer or the customer's general contractor to do because okay. uh, we we travel enough of a distance that for us to to bid all of our jobs to include that would m- just exponentially make our work uh, harder and uh, take much longer. So we, we sure, because, give the customer yeah. the information that they need from us, and then we let them contact the utilities and contact the uh, the local police, the state police, and basically do the work that it takes to clear the move route. And that allows us to do what we do best, which is just come in, lift the house, get it moved, and get it set down at the new site and be out of there as quickly okay. as possible. Okay. And are there specific uh are there specific permits that one would have to deal with to pick up and move a house or does this vary by location? Uh moving on the property usually does not require a moving permit. Uh, if you are moving okay. down the road, then we have to pull an oversized load permit, uh, just like any other oversized load you would see going down the road. Now, in our case, we actually take up the entire street, and you know there has to be detours, and, and sometimes they'll just uh, get. Depending on how quickly we can get through, they'll just move people off the road into parking lots or driveways as we come through. But uh, mm-hmm. sometimes they actually do a full closure of the road. But yeah, we 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 take care of pulling the permit necessary to go down the road, and then in the cases okay. where you're just lifting a house, most states do not have a permit for just lifting. Uh, there are a few that do. Uh, New Jersey has begun to require a lifting permit since Hurricane Sandy came through, um, so we we do have to provide documentation for that. And there are a few other states around the country that that require that. But for the most part. Just lifting straight up or moving a building on your property or across fields, as long as you're not going onto a road, then you would not have to pull a permit for that. Now, there still would need to be permits pulled for the new foundation and anything else regarding that. But for the move itself, okay. there is no permit. Interesting. Okay. Um, well, Mike, that's pretty much – those were my big questions. Uh is there anything else you'd like to add? Any kind of common misconceptions people have about moving houses or anything particularly interesting you think we should know, a fun story, anything like that? Well, uh, the, it, it's interesting because uh, I think the most common misconceptions that we deal with here <clears throat> are people that think it's way too expensive, that want to mm. do something that's way too expensive. And then on the other hand, you have people who just can't imagine the the price. Like they they think that they should be able to get their house moved for two or three thousand dollars. <laughs> you tell them a ballpark cost, and they're just shocked. That's obviously completely unrealistic. What are we talking? I mean, are can you give an at least number <laughs> for a, a yeah. typical house? Yeah. So on the lowest end of things, you're. You're having your average small house lift. Like if we were just to lift a house straight up a couple of feet so that they could add to the foundation or replace the foundation. Um, a small house on the easiest circumstances, you're going to be paying around eight to $10,000 for the lift. That eight would be a okay. And that would okay. be just for the lift. That would not include new foundation work or utilities or engineering or permits and all that sort of stuff. Um, on okay. the bottom end of a house move, uh, depending on where you are in the country, um, but generally you're looking probably a minimum of fifteen to twenty thousand. Fifteen and to then, twenty thousand. Okay. And then it just goes up from there. Um, your average house okay. move is probably more around the uh, neighborhood of thirty to forty thousand dollars. Okay. And that is just okay. for the move. That would not include all the uh, all the other surrounding costs. Sure. So that's but, that's uh, to, to 
support the house, pick it up, bring it down the road, and put it back down. And then Correct. all of the other circumstance would be extra. Okay. And uh, right, one thing that's... I was going to say on on those on the misconceptions, we get a lot of calls. Um, Detroit seems to be a, an area where there where houses go for fairly cheap, um, and right. so we get uh, an amazing amount of calls for two and a half story Victorian triple brick houses to move from Detroit to Florida or to Montana. Uh, or, all right. Um, okay. And and an amazing amount of those calls don't want to take no for an answer. Mm. But that's just it's just not feasible to do that. Um you you're not allowed on the highway on an on an interstate with a house. And so you would have to stay okay. on back roads, regular roads and back roads and you would have to find a route that would uh would not have any overpasses for you to go under. And then you would have to get a price on utilities which uh, I've had an I've seen an inter, one intersection in Downingtown, Pennsylvania that had a lot of fiber optics and probably had some 50 cables across it. Um, be over fifty thousand dollars just to move the wires in that one intersection. So, Got it. You know, to move a house a hundred miles with moving wires uh, is just nowhere is even close to worth it. Right. It would but, be. Uh, it, yeah. You might as well just build it. Yeah. Yeah. A good article to read. I've actually written up uh, a little bit of an article um, list of things to check when you're choosing a structural mover, um, things Perfect. to look for. And that is on the home page of our website towards the bottom. There's a, a fairly big link, and it says how to choose a structural mover. And that would give uh, a lot of good information um in re in regards to that if if somebody is actually seriously thinking about moving house mm. start start doing research there we have a lot of information on that sort of thing on our website um but probably the key thing to start out with would be reading that article um, perfect i'll I'll include that link um in the information under this video okay great okay Mike. Thank you so much. Honestly, I've learned so much just by talking to you, and I'm sure everyone has. This has been fantastic. I'm going to include all the information to access your website um, in the information under this video, so everybody will have, okay. have all the resources they need. Whether or not you're interested in moving a house, if you're looking for your dream historical home, make sure to check out CircleOldHouses.com for hundreds of gorgeous old houses currently on the market.